All right, guys, we've made it. We're, we're on the topic of diagonalization. So you, you got to be able to pronounce it. I mean, that, that's step one. So diagonalization, diagonalizability, all these things, work on it. And then, uh, so yeah, go pause the video and come back when you're, when you're confident in your pronunciation. And so now we can like talk about what it actually is. So um, first things first, what is a diagonal matrix? Here's an example. One, zero, zero, two. This is a diagonal matrix. Why? Because it has non-zero entries along the main diagonal and then zeros everywhere else. And an interesting property of diagonal matrices is if you raise a diagonal matrix to some arbitrary power, like to the nth power, it's equal to the matrix where the entries on the main diagonal get raised to the nth power. And that's really convenient. Because if you don't have a diagonal matrix, it's really, really hard to raise a matrix to like the hundredth power, for example. But if you have a diagonal matrix, it's easy because you can just distribute the, the power to the entries on the main diagonal. And you can convince yourself of this if you wanted to. So, But in this video, we're going to do this process called diagonalizing a matrix. Um, so if a matrix is diagonalizable, Okay, which it's not, it's not always, but in the case that it is, you can write the matrix, say the matrix is A, as the product of three matrices, some matrix C times some matrix D times the inverse of C, where D is going to be a diagonal matrix. Um, and uh, what's the point of this? Well, the point of this is, you're trying to take like the hundredth power of some matrix, but that matrix isn't diagonal. Well, you can if you can write that matrix in this form, CDC inverse, where D is in where D is diagonal, then it is easy to do A to the hundredth power. Because for example, A squared is equal to what? CDC inverse times CDC inverse. So what does that look like? And uh, if you look, this C inverse times C. I mean, the property of inverses, a, a matrix times its inverse, or vice versa, is equal to the identity matrix. And so this inner part just simplifies to the identity matrix. And then C, D, identity, D, C, inverse is just C, D squared, C inverse, right? So this simplifies to C, D squared, C inverse. And you could have done the same thing for any arbitrary power. So A to the N in general equals, or always equals, C, D to the N, C inverse because you're going to have a big chain of CDC inverse and all those C inverse C's are going to cancel because it equals the identity matrix. So, and remember D, we're defining it as a diagonal matrix and you know how to do D to the nth power. You just like up here, you can just distribute it to the entries on the main diagonal. And so um, here's the game plan. <coughs> what are the matrices C, D, and, and, and C inverse? How do you get the matrices C and D? if you want to diagonalize a matrix. Well, um, you can like look at the lecture slides, I guess, on the proof of this, but I'm just going to tell you. The matrix C is defined to be, okay, these three lines mean is defined to be, a matrix whose columns are the eigenvectors of A. Whose columns are eigenvectors not necessarily the eigenvectors, because you're probably going to have infinitely many, but just bear with me. We're going to talk about this some more. The columns are eigenvectors of A. Okay. The matrix D is defined to be something that looks kind of like this. Lambda 1, lambda 2, dot, 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 lambda, lambda n. So you're, so you're going to have n eigenvalues. And then zeros everywhere else. So I'm just going to put big zeros there. So it's a diagonal matrix, right, by definition. And the entries on the main diagonal are going to be the eigenvalues. Um, and then you're going to have C inverse, right? But if you notice, in order to diagonalize A, you got to have C, D, and also C inverse. So that means the matrix C has to be invertible. Okay, now think about what that means. The invertible matrix theorem says that if you're going to have a matrix be invertible, well, then the columns, for example, have to be linearly independent. So that means you better have n linearly independent eigenvectors of A. Um, assuming A is an n by n matrix, so then C would be an n by n matrix. It has n columns. 
And if the columns are going to be linearly independent and the columns are the eigenvectors, you need to have n linearly independent eigenvectors of A so that you can construct a C matrix that's invertible. Um, and so that's going to be the deciding factor. So, for example, or like what that means is for A to be diagonalizable, um, you need to have n linearly independent eigenvectors. Okay, so this piece of information, if you have n linearly independent eigenvectors, if you know that to be true, then you you can construct a suitable C matrix that's invertible, and then your D matrix is going to be a diagonal matrix where the co where the entries along the main diagonal are the eigenvalues, and you're going to see this in the next video when we do an example, but they have to line up. So like lambda 1 has to be the corresponding eigenvalue to the to whatever eigenvector you put as the first column of C. And they have to match like that, right? But I mean, you know, following this process, you could get uh, C and D, and then you can compute C inverse, and you'll be able to diagonalize A, and then it'll be super easy for you to compute A to an arbitrary power by this formula down here. So let me leave you with the four ways that you can tell if a matrix is diagonalizable. Okay, so here we go. The four ways to tell if an n by n matrix is diagonalizable. The first one, like I just mentioned, you, you have to have n linearly independent eigenvectors. That way you can construct your C matrix and have it be invertible, and then you'll be able to get your diagonalization A equals CDC inverse. Or you could think, well, if you have n distinct eigenvalues, meaning n different eigenvalues, um, then you're going to have n linearly independent eigenvectors. And that's by some theorem. It says that if you have you know, eigenvalue 1 and eigenvalue 2 of your matrix, then uh, the eigenvectors corresponding to 1 and 2 eigenvalues are going to be linearly independent. And so if you have n unique, like distinct eigenvalues, then you automatically have n linearly independent eigenvectors, and then the matrix would be diagonalizable. The third one says that the sum, that if the sum of the geometric multiplicities is n, then you have a diagonalizable matrix, and that's because, remember, geometric multiplicity means the dimension of your eigenspace. So you can kind of kind of think about this like if you have n dimension worth of eigenspace in total, then that will tell you you have n linearly independent, oh, this should be a T, right? then you have n linearly independent eigenvectors. And then the fourth one says, if for each lambda the geometric multiplicity equals the algebraic multiplicity, then you have a diagonalizable matrix. Um, this one has to do with the fact that um, there's a theorem that says that the sum of all the algebraic multiplicities of all your eigenvalues when you count for complex eigenvalues is always going to add up to n. Right. Or in other words, you have you're always going to have n eigenvalues counting for mul algebraic multiplicity, um, and so if the geometric multiplicity equals the algebraic multiplicity for each eigenvalue, then the geometric multiplicities add up to n, and so then you know by number three you have a diagonalizable matrix. Um, cool. So in the next video we're going to put this to the test and we're going to look at a matrix and determine is it diagonalizable, and if so, we're going to diagonalize it. And by diagonalize it, I mean write that matrix as the product of CDC inverse. Okay, I'll see you then.